The GoPro Hero 10 is an excellent tool for creating high quality time lapses. It's small, it's waterproof, and it's easy to use. All you gotta do is plug in your settings, press the record button, and the camera will do the rest. In fact, one of my favorite use cases for the GoPro is creating time lapses. Today I'm going to show you all the best settings that I use for creating time lapses in both the video mode and the photo mode on the GoPro Hero 10. This of course raises the question, which mode should you use? With previous GoPro models, my default go-to was using the photo mode. However, the video mode has come a long way and on the GoPro Hero 10, I find myself using the video mode as much as the photo mode now. The video mode is great because it gives you great quality time lapses and it's very simple and easy to use. It saves a lot of time. Here's a simple way to decide which mode you want to use for your next project. If you want greater editing flexibility, then you probably want to use the photo mode. The photo mode will give you hundreds or thousands of individual photos that you can edit and then put together into a single time lapse. If you want to do little or no editing of your time lapse in post-production, then you probably want to go with video mode. Video mode is going to give you that single .mp4 file at the end that's ready to share or use in your project. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the best settings for both the video mode and the photo mode so that you'll have both regardless of which one you want to use. Really quick before we get into those settings, there are three tools that I recommend having anytime you're shooting a time lapse. These tools will set you up for success with that time lapse and they'll help you get the very best results. First tool you want is a tripod of some kind. It can be something as small as the shorty here, or it can be something as large as a standard tripod. You'll want to make sure your camera does not move at all during the time lapse. Second, you'll want some type of external power pack. The external power pack will allow you to power your GoPro. Otherwise, the battery in the GoPro will only give you about two hours of filming before it runs out. With a time lapse, you don't want to be limited to just two hours. Oftentimes, you're going to want several hours in a row. So having this external power pack would theoretically allow you to shoot a time lapse for several days before the power would run out. The third thing you'll want to have is the USB pass-through door on the GoPro here. This allows you to plug in the power cable without having the latch open. If you have the latch open, your battery could fall out and your GoPro certainly no longer remains waterproof. So I highly recommend having the pass-through door as well. I have linked to these three items in the description below in case you do not own them and want to check them out. All right, let's get into all of my best settings. Now, please do note that these settings are for time lapses you're going to film in the daytime. If you want my best settings for night lapses, I've linked to those in a video above. The first settings I'm gonna go over today are the video mode. The great thing about the video mode is it will do all the work for you inside the GoPro. And at the end, you'll have a single .mp4 file that's ready to share or add to your next project. To go to the time-lapse mode, once you're in the time-lapse mode, you're gonna click down here at the bottom and you're gonna make sure you select time-lapse. Once you've selected time-lapse, you're gonna click here on the edit button on the right-hand side. So since we're going over video mode first, the first thing you wanna make sure is you wanna make sure format here is set to video. You've got two options here. It's either video or photo. Once you've set it to video, you wanna go over here to resolution. You wanna make sure that's set to 4K. Next, you're gonna to go to lens here and you have a couple options for lens. I recommend keeping it wide as wide is going to give you the largest field of view but you do also have the option to set it to linear or narrow. I don't recommend ever doing narrow. That is too narrow for a time-lapse. But linear can give you some pretty good results with a still relatively wide lens, but I still recommend sticking with wide as much as possible. Down here for the interval, typically for daytime time-lapses, I recommend having an interval around five seconds. Five seconds is gonna to tend to give you the best general results with a time-lapse. Two seconds is a little bit too fast for most cases, but if you're doing a couple hour long time-lapse, two seconds could be a good option for you, but five seconds is generally my go-to. Scheduled capture, you can keep that off. Duration, I like to set that to no limit. That way I can keep my camera going as long as I want to, and then I just return to it and turn it off when my time-lapse is done. Timer, you wanna keep that at off, and zoom, you wanna keep that at 1x. Protune settings here are some of the key settings for getting a great time lapse. 
first thing you want to do is you want to make sure bit rate is set to high. With the EV comp, you want to make sure that's set to negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 is going to get you the best detail in those shadows and highlights. It's going to make sure that stuff isn't blown out too much, especially when you're filming a daytime sky. It's going to help keep those whites under control and your clouds are going to have a lot more detail to them. So I recommend setting it to negative 0.5. For the white balance, I generally recommend setting this to 5000K when you're doing a daytime time lapse. If you are shooting a sunrise or a sunset, then I do recommend putting this up to 6500K. 6500K is going to really help you capture those reds, oranges, and yellows that are often found during the sunrise and sunset times of day. But otherwise, I recommend 5000K for general daytime shooting. That's going to generally tend to look the best. I don't recommend putting auto there as white balance can sometimes jump around during your time lapse and it can make it look a little bit weird with the colors. So I definitely recommend setting a value there. For the ISO minimum, I recommend setting that to 100 and the ISO max, I also recommend setting that at 100. Setting the ISO min and max to 100 is going to give you the best results and it's going to basically have very little to no noise in your time lapse. It's going to look really good. Even if you're shooting a sunrise or a sunset, where you're starting while it's dark or ending while it's dark. I still like keeping that there because it represents that fade to light in the case of a sunrise or that fade to darkness in the case of a sunset. It looks really good when you do it that way. So I recommend keeping it 100 there. If you set ISO min at 100 and ISO max at something like 200, 400, or 800, the lighting is sometimes going to change in a noticeable way during the video time lapse, and it's gonna look a little bit weird. So I recommend keeping those values the same. Sharpness, I highly recommend keeping that at low. Low is going to give you the best results. If you want to, you could also set it to medium for a little bit of increased sharpness in your video, but I don't recommend setting it to high. High is a little bit too sharp. For color, you've got a couple options here, and this is really gonna be up to you as far as what type of color you want your time lapse to have. I usually keep mine set at natural. Natural is essentially going to give your time lapse the look exactly as it was when you filmed it. However, if you want higher saturation, you could go up here to vibrant, and that's gonna make a lot of those colors pop, especially the blues. And if for some reason you want it to be flat, where the colors are kind of muted, then you would go with flat. But I don't recommend going with flat unless you want to do a little bit of color correction on that time lapse later on, because flat is going to be, in my opinion, too washed out with the colors. You're going to miss out on a lot of that good color detail. And the shortcuts below are defaults, and those do not matter. I leave those alone. Next, let's talk about the photo mode settings. As I mentioned before, the photo mode will result in hundreds or thousands of individual photos that you can then edit and put together into a single time lapse. The photo mode will give you the maximum amount of control over the time lapse and how it looks. If you want to check out my editing workflow for time lapses, I've linked to the video above. All right, for the photo mode, we're going to go back here to the time lapse menu again, and we're going to click edit right here. And this time to get to the photo mode, we're going to click here on format and we're going to drag this up here to photo. Once you do that, you're going to see a couple different options here. For the lens, you're going to have the three options again of wide, linear, or narrow. Again, I recommend using wide or linear, but preferably wide because wide is going to give you a lot more flexibility when editing the photos in post-production. For the interval, again, I recommend doing five seconds on this for photos as well. Uh, you could do two seconds, like I said earlier, if you're doing a shorter time lapse, but I recommend five seconds. 10 seconds you could do if you're doing like an all day time lapse and you want to have that fairly short duration at the end, but I still recommend five seconds as the happy medium. For the output here, you're gonna wanna put raw. Raw is going to give you both the raw and the JPEG files, and the raw photos are gonna have a lot more detail in them. So later on, when you go to edit, you're gonna have a lot more detail that you can customize and you can really get that look that you're going for. Standard mode would only output the JPEG files. So if you do raw, you get both. You get the raw and the JPEG. So really there's no reason not to do raw as long as you have plenty of space on your micro SD card. As long as you have at least a 64 gigabyte micro SD file, you should have plenty of space, even if you did a time lapse all day long. Next, for the scheduled capture, I recommend keeping that off. For the duration, I recommend keeping it at no limit. For the timer, I recommend keeping that off. And the zoom here is not applicable. It's gonna be grayed out. For the ProTune settings for the EV comp, I recommend putting that in negative 0.5 or negative one. 
If it's a really bright day, I recommend putting it at negative one. If it's a sun and clouds type of day, I recommend putting it at negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 is my go-to and where I have it most of the time for the photo mode. For the white balance, it doesn't matter as much in the raw mode because you can technically change that later on when editing the photos and you can have that sync to all the photos. However, as a good practice, I do generally still set a value here. And generally I set that to 5,000K for a daytime time lapse. If you are doing sunrise or sunset, you could set it at 6,500K if you want to, but you can of course change that later on. For the ISO min, I recommend keeping that at 100, and the ISO max, I also recommend keeping it at 100. For the sharpness, definitely put it to low when you're doing the photo mode. You can always add sharpness when you're editing later on, so I recommend keeping it at low, because it's a lot easier to add sharpness than to take sharpness away. For the color, I recommend setting it to flat, since you're doing photo mode. You want maximum control over the colors and the saturation, so you can always bring out that saturation when editing, so you wanna keep that at flat. And the shortcuts down here will not apply. You can leave those all at their defaults. So those are all of my best settings for creating time lapses on the GoPro Hero 10 using both the video mode and the photo mode. If you found this video to be helpful, please hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe and bell notification button, and you'll be notified every time I publish a new video. Until we talk again, happy time lapsing on the GoPro Hero 10.